a novel just joins us now. And I mean, it just, it just is mind blowing when you sit there and you look at all of that. And it just, when you come to perform live, the back catalog you have to choose from. Is it, is it hard to know which ones to pick, what you're gonna throw in there, or can you just keep changing it up? It's overwhelming. Yes. Um, whenever I look at, um, people see me when we're performing, I'm looking down at my feet. It's because we have a set list that's so absurdly long. Yeah. And I'm looking back at the band and they're wondering what the hell is he gonna choose tonight? Um, you're like a DJ. Yeah, well, Bingo. Oh. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we do is that um, we get inspiration from the way that the crowd is reacting. Yeah. And then we sort, sort of uh, shift the set um, if we feel that we need to. But we do have a plan when we go out there, but it can change at any Which moment. Which is incredibly rare because I imagine most artists nowadays have a set list and it's rigid and structured because there is a backing track or yeah, there are certain right, things yeah. that are there yeah. and yours is not like that. I mean, they, there can't be many people left that go out there and perform totally live. Yeah, we're, we're pretty old school like that. We are totally, totally live. As a matter of fact, um, we were playing the other day at uh, Hampton Court Palace and I called out the wrong song. It was the song we had already played. Oh. <laughs> Did you do it again? <laughs> we didn't play it again, <laughs> but I announced that we were going to play it again. And I was like, we did that already, right? I said, um, so maybe... I'm sure the fans <laughs> wouldn't mind listening to all your songs again and again I just again. love that. <laughs> and, um, and so, obviously, you're, we're, we're going to talk about uh, being in the Eden Sessions, which is a, a, an amazing festival, and with Chic. And did, did you ever imagine that when you first started, was it 1977 with, uh, with Sheep when you first yeah, yeah. kicked off, that, that this would still be an ongoing project? Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, we, were, we were honestly in our hearts just trying to get a hit record. We didn't um, believe that it would last. Um, and then when we had this horrible event um, in America, Disco Sucks, which happened in 1979, mm. That was just two years into our career. Mm. So if you think about it, we had, um, we sold close to maybe 80, 90 million units of product in two years, mm. in two years time. So we, had we hadn't even met Diana Ross yet. Yeah. I mean, this is still just 1979. So we had We Are Family, He's the Greatest Dancer, Just Can't Wait Till Saturday, Everybody Dance, The Free, Good Time, all that stuff. That all happened in just two years. So when, when uh, Disco Sucks sort of derailed Chic, we, we didn't know what we would do. And uh, we put out a couple of albums that didn't do well. And then one night I met this gentleman named David Bowie, mm. <laughs> put me on a completely different trajectory. Wow, yeah. wow. and, and the, the gig that you're doing at, at the Eden Project, is it, am I able to ask you about the set list and what a crowd can expect, or are you just going to pick and choose that on the night? I'm just going to pick and choose that on the night. If I tell you that and then we do something else, they'll say, <laughs> aha! You know, that, that's how social media works now. He says, well, you know, on ITV, he said that they were doing this, and I can't believe he didn't do that song. I am, um, uh, it's an amazing lineup this year. Um, I think it's tomorrow, we've got uh, Stereophonics, uh, then you're on on the 21st. Uh, Liam Gallagher, 26, Chemical yes. Brothers, 28, Snow Patrol yes. um, on the 29th, Kylie Minogue yes. on the 2nd and 3rd. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's a, it is an extraordinary setup in a, in a brilliant part of, uh, of, of the country, down in Cornwall, the Eden Sessions, with the biomes in the background. It looks beautiful, yeah. right? Yeah. When, uh, when I first arrived there, the, the first time we played, I just went up on top of the hill and just photographed it. It was mm. just fabulous. When was the first time you picked up a guitar? Oh, I was around 16 or 17. But what was really um, fortunate for me, uh, I was a classical musician, um, so I read music very well, and I happened to play the clarinet. It was the last instrument that I played in the symphony orchestra. Now, the reason why this was magical and fortunate is because it has the exact same written range as the guitar. So really? even though I was very poor, I had a stack full of etudes that I got from my school because, you know, they gave it to you free. So when I picked up the guitar, I had just tons of music lessons that I could just practice. And within two years, I was working on Sesame Street. 
Did you wow. pick up the guitar to impress a girl? Yeah, you heard that oh, story, I huh? <laughs> and, uh, Did it then... work? No, because <laughs> I was horrible. And so the next, did, did, did the next time you saw her, were you were on Sesame Street? Yeah. And you met up with No, her actually, the next time I saw her, I had already graduated from Sesame Street, and I was now at the Apollo Theater. Yeah. But it's not my personality to sort of brag. No, but yeah. I wanted to. I wanted <laughs> I bet to say, you, did. you know, the guy that you fired. Look at me now. Because you wanted to be in her band, didn't I you? I wanted to be in her band. They the were band quite good, was. actually. You and were Sesame in... Street started the whole thing. I mean, that's where that's where it started. It's the 50th anniversary this that's year. This year. Are you involved in that? I am indeed. How could I not be? How could that's, you not be? It's my heart. Your yeah. um, you have a, a, a it helps because you love what you do, but b your work ethic is extraordinary. I was looking at a, 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 that it was since 19, since sort of starting. You've only ever missed two two gigs, two days, yeah, and that's yeah. it. I mean, is that just something that you just think, right? The show has to go on regardless. Absolutely. Do you know? So here's something that no one knows, not in the media, but I can say it now because I'm healing. Um, so we've been on tour with Cher. Uh, on and off for the last year or so. And uh, this second leg of the tour, five minutes before I was, I was to go on stage, I slipped and fell and uh, cracked a rib. Oh, gosh. And I knew that there was nothing I could do, so I went out and I played the show. So and painful. I'm still healing. This is this happened months ago because it takes forever. A long that. time. Yeah. A really long time. And has that affected the the what you can do and your movements on stage? Um, I just I when you're doing it, you just let the adrenaline take you. Mm. Yeah. It's when I was younger, I used to be a martial arts fighter, and when you're doing it, you just you know people are knocking you in the head, and you keep going until somehow they knock you out, but you don't feel the pain when, when it's happening. Mm, you must have thought as you, as, you, as you fell, as a martial arts fighter, I should have fallen better than that. Um, well, actually, I thought as a martial arts fighter, thank God, I knew what was going on, because I could tell from the pain right away you knew what it was. exactly what was wrong. Mm, wow. Well, I hope that heals soon, that's for sure. Is well, it's it, happened um, months ago, yeah. so it's is it, is it true that there is discussion of, of your life story in, in a West End show? Yes. Is that true? Yeah, it's really true. And what are you going to do? I don't know. Hopefully get it right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this I'm, is something you're writing. Obviously, you'll be heavily involved in it. Yeah, so I, I had started um, writing. As a matter of fact, I had finished Act One um, about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. And uh, just a few months ago, I happened to um, get invited to dinner uh, over to uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber's house because his son had seen us perform the night before. And I guess he probably went home and said, Dad, you got to see this guy's canon of music because it's like ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And Andrew is a very smart. I mean, he's, he's really bright, really bright. And we sat down, we had dinner and we just clicked. It was something magical about it because we didn't talk about my music or his music. We talked about uh, Richard Rogers, Rogers and Hammerstein. We started talking, and he and I were at dinner singing and singing, you know, oh, like wow. musicals from when we were kids. And, um, and we got into it and we talked about all of the great compositions that somehow have have touched our hearts, but are not like super popular. Mm -hmm. And and the fact that he and I knew every single song, it was great. Wow. And so he's in collaboration. There's a hopefully lobby. I hope so. We haven't signed any papers, but we sure That's like each other. A lot. And, and then last together. night, um, his son and I, we went to uh, see Death of a Salesman uh, at. Uh, the, the young Vic, you know, so... Oh, you're going out with the family. This is a given. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, so we're, we're gonna, And his daughter is awesome, too, so it's, <laughs> yes. like, it's like he's got... Um, it's Niall, really thank you. you. Thank uh, you. Niall and Sheik performing at the Eden Sessions in Cornwall, 21st of June, as I said, and also Meltdown Festival on the South Bank yeah. uh, this summer as well. Another I'm curating one. Meltdown. Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah, busy, yeah, busy. Yeah, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Guys.